Thank you for joining us this evening. We had uh, some technical difficulties and are ready to pick up our agenda with citizens' comments on agenda items. That being said, are there any comments from the citizens on agenda items this evening? I, could, I you have Jessica your, Pierce. Thank you. 165 Francis Road. Just one more time on the rezoning. I know that we've talked about options A, option C, option D, and on the table, or what's before us now is we're in option C. Tonight's agenda item is possibly going with option D. As you know, my, um, my stand is I still prefer option A. I realize that you're looking at sending one of these two neighborhoods to Regency to grow the numbers. Again, I feel if you look at the two neighborhoods that you're looking at closely, you're not going to grow the numbers with either neighborhood. You're just going to pad them for a couple years. So with that said, if you're just going to be able to pad them for a couple years, I'd really appreciate maybe looking at option A again, because who wants to go through this again in five years? Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Fierce. Hey, ladies and gentlemen of the board and Dr. Glasspool, I'm Matthew Benton at 163, or 563, excuse me, Center Hill Road in Plum. Um, I'm here with respect to the same agenda item uh, to express concerns over the Plan D that would uh, uh, move the Center Hill Road away from uh, Center School. Um, the board recently heard some pretty odd, you know, valid and heartfelt concerns from the Frankstown Acres neighborhood that, you know, is with respect to the disruptions and uh, the uh, inconvenience and inconveniences that would uh, occur as a result from moving their neighborhood out. And um, I'd like for the, you know, the board to consider the fact that those same inconveniences all apply to my neighborhood. Um, I can look right out my window and see uh, Center Hill Elementary. I can hear the school bells. Um, you know, my daughters would be passed, uh, right, you know, bust right past Center Elementary. And uh, so those, those all, you know, we feel apply to us. So, um, you know, one positive thing is I feel like uh, many members of the board, uh, but just by the fact that I'm standing ha here now and my neighborhood's on the agenda, uh, that, that can, concedes to the fact that the board must, at least some members agree with the fact that that's a disruption, you know, that'd be trouble for that neighborhood. So, um, so it, again, you know, considering all things equal, you know, it'd be the same trouble for my neighborhood. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say it, it makes sense to look at, you know, the actual map, look at, you know, what makes the most sense logistically being that um, all neighborhoods really would be impacted equally. Um, one positive thing here, if you think of it, you know, nobody wants to leave Center Elementary. I mean, it's an excellent, excellent school. We love the principal, the teachers there. Um, we haven't even had to consider looking at a private school because of the fact that we feel like we're getting a private level school, like an upper level education at Center Elementary. My daughters are just absolutely thrive in there and we love that um, uh, school. And uh, so one of our, our objections to potentially going to Regency is that you know, I, I can assume by the fact that it's a part of Plum Borough and it's a very high quality school, it's, it's, it's probably a great school, but we feel we only stand to lose because we know exactly what we have at Center Elementary. Um, additionally, uh, and this is maybe a little bit more personal and specific to my family, but um, uh, we do have a daughter that's going through the GATE program. Uh, there's been some really special, just excellent accommodations made for her to be able to keep up with her ex uh, education. She's going to fifth grade math as a fourth grader, for example, just some, uh, those are just awesome things that are happening and we're so happy with that and we'd be concerned that the, her being moved to another school would really result in, you know, an educational disruption. So um, my family's concern, I guess, I think the best way to summarize it, there, there's definitely some inconveniences involved. You know, the, any neighborhood that's going to get moved, there's going to be inconveniences involved. But our biggest concern is actually we, we legitimately feel, and I'm not, not coming to the board with any sort of pretense, you know, I honestly and sincerely feel there'd be a, you know, an educational disruption that would come out of uh, my daughters being moved to another elementary school. So, um, so I, I, again, thank you so much for uh, hearing out all the comments. Uh, thank you for hearing the other neighborhood and really, you know, you've demonstrated that you're listening to everybody here. Um, not an easy task, you know, to come up against, but uh, I'd be in support, uh, similar to Mrs. Fierce that uh, came up here, that, you know, more of a, a plan A or the, the options I understand it would really keep keep the neighborhoods there in close proximity to elementary uh, to center elementary at that school um you know again i can look right out the window that was the reason that my family moved 
to the location that we did 12 years ago and put our roots down there was the fact that the elementary school is right there. Um, we toured the schools way before we had kids and we, we could have lived anywhere in a Pittsburgh area and it was, and you know, again, without pretense, you know, it was uh, the Plumborough School District is why we chose where we live, so thank you. Thanks, Mr. Benton. Chuck Griffin, 400 Clements Road, also about the redistricting, Frankstown Acres. I mean, as everybody had spoke, it's gonna be a disruption for everybody, and we understand that. But I still don't see how 20 or 30 people are, can justify for re, rebuilding a school, how that's gonna help you grow that school. For $10 million for 20 kids, I think my kids are worth a lot, not that much, to go and put them in, build a school for them. To me, that looks like what you're trying to do. You're trying to do a school for 20 kids. You're moving 20 kids into it. I just, I don't see how it's, how it's feasible. There's Pl Frankstown Acres and Center Hill area. They're not growing areas. Their older folks have established their roots there. That's where they're staying. They don't have young kids. I mean, drive through the areas. There's not a bunch of young kids. You're not gonna grow the school out of those two areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Hi, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Lori Katz. I did speak at the last um, school board meeting regarding the redistricting. And I just wanted to um, say that I agree with everyone that spoke. I agree with uh, the people from Frankstown Acres that don't want to have their children moved to a further away school. <coughs> That's the position that I'm in. I live in the Frankstown Acres area. And wow. I also agree with the gentleman from the Center Hill area district too, because I, don't see how moving our communities to pad the numbers at Regency makes any sense whatsoever. Um, you yourself said last week that 70 of the students, I believe was the number, correct me if I'm wrong, from Regency had, were, had been requesting to attend at another school. So to me that says, the kids that are supposed to even go to Regency because they live there wanted to go to another school. So why would anyone else want to take their children and uproot them from where they're used to being to go to that school to help add to those numbers when the kids that are there don't even want to go? Or the families that are there have other reasons for wanting them to go to another school. This is nothing against Regency. I have friends that live there. I have friends that their children's go there. And, and I get it, they love that school too. If somebody wanted to close center, I would be just as heartbroken. But if we have to uproot these students, which is to me what this is about, the kids, whether it's Center Hill neighborhood or whether it's Frankstown Acres neighborhood, it's wrong to me to uproot them, to try to pad the numbers somewhere else. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mrs. Katz. Can I have your address, please? Mrs. Katz, your address, please. I live at 101 Palmer Road. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm, my name is Gretchen Kelly. I live at 567 Center Hill Road. And I think you've all read some of the concerns that I have that I share with residents on my street. I won't rehash all of those. But my question to all of you tonight is, we're back here, we're having the same discussion over and over again, we're taking up community time at each meeting. A plan was set, we keep revisiting, revisiting, revisiting. And I think Dr. Glasspole clearly identified when this all started, the whole district was gonna be rezoned, a beautiful new map was created, 
everyone was going to be sent to their home school um, and children were going to be sent to their closest school and no one was to pass another school to go to school each day. So that, was, that map was set and everybody was comfortable with that. Friends that live in the Rustic Ridge plan were told years ago they were going to be moved to Pivik. They had time to plan for that, prepare for that. New folks that moved into the area knew that they were going to be going, maybe moved to a new school. So when your plan was all set, we're all here tonight because we are at your mercy and we're expecting and hoping all, every one of you is going to make decisions in our children's best interest. You're sitting on a school board making decisions for our school and these last few meetings are identifying that some of these decisions are not good decisions. And when you make a plan and you can't stick with the plan, then we can't fully trust that moving forward we're going to be able to work with the school board and trust things that you're going to say and you're going to do, making decisions in the best interest of our children. So I'm not here to beg you to let my kid go to Center Elementary School. I'm asking you tonight as acting school board members to make the right decisions, stick with plans that you told your entire community, students in your community that you were going to do and not keep wavering and changing. And um, thank you for your time. Thanks for your comments, Ms. Kelly. Um, I live on uh, 159 Palmer Road, and uh, I used to live in an apartment, and then we were going to have my first daughter, and, you know, being young, it's tough, and, you know, I always took a bus to elementary school, so whenever we started looking, you know, it took us forever to find the right deal. And we ended up finding the house on Palmer, and we were so happy, me and my fiance, because, you know, my daughter's right there, and, you know, she wouldn't, you know, have to take a bus until she goes to the junior high, which made us very comfortable, and we were real happy, and, uh, you know, not only that, just, you know, she has a lot of, you know, friends, and she made at center and she's like real nervous and I'm sure a lot of kids are but you know she was real nervous about making friends when she did leave preschool to go to elementary and now she's like so happy and uh, you know she's just a nervous wreck about you know switching schools and you know very nervous and you know I told her everything you know should work out and I just you know it's, uh, it's like you know it's a minute up the road if that you know, from where Palmer to Center Elementary, and uh, I don't know, I just, I don't, I don't see why, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, I know everyone's probably very intelligent, and I know there's probably another way around it to make it happen, and uh, thank you. Your name, sir. Thanks, Mr. Tavilla. Any other comments on agenda items? Comments on non-agenda items? No other comments, Dr. Glasspool. Facilities Committee, Mr. Rich Zucco, Chair, recommend approval of the following use of facilities as requested, as presented. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Request permission to declare as unused and unnecessary sold for cash value the following items as listed. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to purchase a 2015 Ford Transit 350 XL low roof wagon at a cost of $33,200. $31 as presented. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, I'd like to m make sure that uh, what we're doing here is we're buying basically a Ford van with, I believe, a seating capacity of 12. And that's basically for a lot of our extracurricular activities and sports events <clears throat> where we don't we have a small team or a small contingent of people going to uh, some kind of event, and this will put our, our bus cost down a little lower because we're not going to have to farm this out, uh, and we don't need a, a 
what is it, CDL driver to run, drive the van. So for smaller events, uh, a small team organization thing, we can actually do this in-house and uh, we projected this is going to cost us probably half as much as what we were currently doing. So I think this was a, a good idea. Uh, I think we should have had this a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I have a couple things. Our budget is now $3.5 million in the deficit. We continue to struggle. Our bond rating has been downgraded. We cannot spend money like this any further. I think it's important that citizens know that. Uh, that said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. No. Motion carries. Motion carries. Recommend approval to pay all GOB invoices as presented. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to contract with Richard Maddox for snow plowing removal services using district vehicles at an hourly rate of $18 as needed for the 2014-15 school year. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval of contract with Dunright Construction and Paving LLC for auxiliary snow plowing removal services at an hourly rate of $95 using his vehicle as needed for the 2014-15 school year. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation also. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? How much did we spend last year on this? Total, total snow removal services? No, just for this. I don't know. I know that uh, he was as a, he's used as a fill-in person when we had heavy snow and when we, to get everything done at a proper time and uh, efficient, we would call him in. Uh, Dr. Glasspool or Mr. Marasini would probably have to tell yeah, you. I exactly. can't get you the number off the top of my no. head. I know that when we looked at this, he was compar comparable to other um, quotes that we received for snow plowing. I, I want to know the, the total cost that we use for an auxiliary. I mean, if we're talking 10 hours, are we talking 100 hours? Are we talking 1,000 hours? You know, mm -hmm. you how much money are we looking at? I don't know, but if you can tell me how many times it's going to snow and how deep, well, I could tell you. That's not the issue. <laughs> well, it is the issue. It's uh, not. We, we don't want to contract for something we're not going to use, so he's our auxiliary standby. Mm -hmm. And when the need arises, we use him. Well, I think you need to look at historical data. What, what, what did we pay last year, Rich? I don't know. I'll I don't know either. Yeah. Mr. Marasini, do you have an yeah. estimate? Yeah, the estimate for uh, snow plow uh, budget was 14000 It came in at 19000 due to the uh, extended snow. $95 an hour does seem a bit steep, but what do well, I know? He uses his vehicles as compared to the item before where they use ours. And that's... Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. no. Motion carries. The facilities committee met on November 11th, 2014. Mr. Zucco will make this report. Uh, basically the report is the good news that there's no bad news. We didn't have any roof leaks. We didn't have any water leakage. We didn't have any accidents or things bad happened to us. So basically it was a, a pretty uneventful month, which is always a good thing. And uh, Obviously, our new holiday park is, is going up very well and on schedule. No problems there either. Uh, I'd, I would like to make one uh, short comment. I guess it's sort of in relation to the facilities committee. Is I, I spent the last two days reviewing all the emails from Mr. Griffin, Mr. Hughes, Mr. S Nikki Smith, Gizzy, uh, Mr. Benton and Lisa, John uh, Varga, Matt Aberley and uh, Lois Shaw, and I, I read all of the emails over and over, and I listened to everything, and I, I don't know what to say except that I, I, I read them all and I was very moved by them, but it seems like what we did was 
we would have some people that were in favor of, of one of our upcoming redistricting items and others that were against it and saying, why my children? But I do want you to know that I, I did read them all and I gave them all consideration. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say except I'm, I'm, I'm considering using, uh, I guess, item A, but the only problem I have with that is that years, a year or two ago, we had a lot of people complaining about the size of our classes, and that's what we had to worry about. Uh, also, Mike, make one quick correction. The 70 students that are uh, sent out on request to attend, those are not all from the same school or going to the same school. That's district-wide. And when, when we decided that we were going to get parity in our facilities, meaning basically Regency was the last school that we had to, to work with and it wasn't a full two-run two school and it wasn't a full run one-run school. So in order to bring that up to make it a, uh, a legitimate no complaint school as far as uh, lacking of anything that was missing in one of the other elementary schools, we wanted to have complete parity in all educational facilities. Uh, that being said, we're not really just trying to pad those people into there. It's a way of establishing a, a complete run in the school, whether they were from one area or another. Uh, I mean, we could draw that map a million different places, I guess. Uh, but the, the fact remains that we still have, want to keep our class sizes uh, to a nice even balance. Uh, and we have a four-run school, a four-run school, a three-run school. And Regency will be a two-run school. Uh, so that being said, I just want to let everybody know that uh, we have listened and I, I, I agreed that I would uh, look into it and that, that was one of the things. We are actually on option C right now and we did agree to look into them. And I just want to let everybody know I did look into every one of those options uh, very carefully. Thank you. Thank you. The next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, December 9, 2014, following the Education Committee in the High School Boardroom. Personnel Committee, Mr. Kevin Dowdell, Chair. Recommend approve the following building principal assignments beginning with the 2015-16 school year as attached. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, just real uh, briefly. Um, all the principals, principals will be in the same school except uh, Mr. Hadley will move from center into O Block and Mr. Nisley will move from Adelaide um, ASOP right now into uh, center school. So those are the two changes. Um, and I think it will be a, a big uh, improvement at the, uh, the junior high school. I think we've uh, desperately needed an assistant uh, for, for several years now, and I think it will be a definite improvement at the uh, O Block Junior High School. Thank you. It seems to me Mr. Fischel's done a fantastic job. I really believe that. So I, don't, I, I, I hope more, more hands on deck are important, but uh, I don't think we can take away from the, from the dedication, experience, and, and uh, well-disciplined students, uh, Mr. Fischel has provided the school district. That being said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to accept the retirement of Julie Tesmer, bus driver, retroactive to November 20, 2014. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to accept the retirement of Greg Hodel, custodian at Center Elementary School, effective February 27, 2015. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to rescind the September 30, 2014 motion to hire Allison Schweier, long-term substitute teacher at Plum High School. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to hire Fran Ferragonio, long-term social studies substitute teacher at the contracted rate, retroactive to November 20, 2014. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. I'd just like to make it clear that uh, this recommendation and the one prior was due to a person who decided not to be employed by the Plum School District, so the second was to replace that person. Correct. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? 
No other discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to hire Michael Sweeney, bus driver, at the contracted rate and the start date to be determined by the superintendent. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval of a maternity leave for Kristen Rock, special education teacher at Plum High School, beginning on or about March 6, 2015, through the end of the 2014-15 school year. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. no. Motion carries. Recommend approval of unpaid medical leave in accordance with the FMLA Act uh, for the following teachers. I'd like to make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Education Committee, Mrs. Michelle Gallagher, <coughs> Chair, recommend Could, approval. Before okay. we go on, Dr. Glasgow, yes. can, we, can we spend a little bit of time, since it's personnel on the Affordable Care Act, uh, on numerous occasions I've asked administration to provide this board with information concerning implementation and what's moving forward with the Affordable Care Act. We did receive some information from the IU, I guess uh, Mr. Brewer, Mr. Marasini, and Ms. Lohman attended 40 slide presentation. Can somebody whittle that down what it means to the school district? Uh, from what aspect, Mr. Kalala? There, there's a um, <clears throat> there's an implementation implementation period that we have to track the employees. Um, that could be from a three month to a 12 month. Um, it's called the SMPs, uh, the sample. <laughs> so there is a sample period that we have to track uh, the employees to determine whether they're going to be uh, over or under 30 hours. Uh, per week. Uh, that, that's what separates what they call the full-time um, uh, equivalent for uh, individuals. And uh, some of the questions that were asked at the uh, uh, seminar that you mentioned was, uh, you know, what gets thrown into determining 30 hours? Um, sick days, um, worker comp days, or there's a whole variety which uh, you have to include as work days worked versus days not worked. Um, with that said, um, it comes down to the issue whether you offer the uh, employees health care or not. Uh, some of the districts that were there indicated that uh, they passed the motion to offer sick care, I mean, uh, health care to all employees. Um, what determines if that premium they pay is affordable is based upon 9.5% uh, of their household income. And when you say household, uh, that could be a uh, the employee and the spouse, it could be the kid over 18 that has a job, it could be the in-law that lives there, uh, and some are conceding that it would just be the employee's W-2 wages that they've earned with the district. So there's some, you know, uh, discrepancy on how you determine the 9.5%. Um, then it goes on um, about penalties. Uh, there, there are uh, two types of penalties. Uh, one that would cost you $2,000 a person that, uh, that doesn't get the insurance. The other one is what they call the doomsday. That's if you don't follow all the procedures, they come back and they fine you on every employee that you have in the district. And where it was left uh, uh, on Monday morning at that seminar was that um, it's still going to uh, evolve. Uh, Dr. Mike Brinkus, who's uh, on the executive team at the IU, indicated that there, there will be a need for uh, very regular meetings to, to continue this. At that meeting, they had two attorneys from Lancaster uh, explaining um, how the process rolls out. And I can tell you, uh, it, it was very, very confusing. Uh, we sent the, the notes out, the, uh, the slides like you mentioned. And, and the, in slides 39 and 40, uh, basically say that, you know, you, you need to establish how you're going to track the people. Uh, and of course, that, that takes some type of uh, coordination with Harris Solutions, ProSoft, um, so that we can do so. So um, I guess my question is this. On numerous occasions, and I use that again, I've asked administration to provide us with some guidance on what this means in resources, time, and focus for the board. 
We need to know that. And we need to know how it's going to impact this budget, if any. So clearly, as we move forward, I think the board is going to expect some more in-depth analysis. The second thing is, has there been any other discussion on who is going to be offered this coverage within the school district by anybody but a board member? Um, you're the only one that asked that, I could be honest with you. Okay. Yes, that, that is the, uh, the question that uh, you had posed to us uh, a couple of times. But we have thought, um, because it is so new, it is so complex, you know, we don't um, feel that we have the information necessary to um, de determine that 30 hour, how it's going to be handled, how it's going to be regulated. In other words, if you have a sub, um, they can only work three days a week. If they work four days a week, they exceed 30 hours. And uh, you know, it, it's the sample period that you're going to um, look at them to determine if they are full time or not, if you offer it or not. Because once they're determined full time, they get it. There's no uh, fluctuation of it. I guess what I'm saying is the board needs to know the information. We just can't sit back and say this is what we think is going to happen. This is what may go is going to happen. I've offered suggestions that you hire, hire a consultant to get an in-depth analysis. We don't even know the people within the school district who are going to be responsible for this. So clearly between now and the next televised meeting, we need to know some answers about the Affordable Care Act. Thank you. Sal, I agree with you, if you don't mind, for two seconds. Sure. Um, I, I agree. I think we, we've had presentations. We've asked questions. Uh, and, and I don't believe you're the only person that's actually inquired about that. Uh, I think we have these arguments every time we talk about Kelly Services. Um, and, and we don't know what that answer is. And if we can't find it out, we, we need to go and get someone to tell us because I do believe that it could have a significant impact and maybe not at all. I mean, we looked at the last Kelly. There was three substitutes that probably would have qualified for health insurance. Um, and, and so we have this big argument with Kelly over three substitutes. But was it really three? Is it really none? Um, how do they go ahead and, and, and determine that. So if we can't get an answer, then we just need to find someone that will give us an answer. And I think we're going into the next year, and, and clearly, you know, it's open enrollment time. And, and if we can't get those answers from the folks that we, we you know, from, the, uh, from our consortium, then maybe we need to go elsewhere and just shop policies as a group. I have no problem going to explore. Maybe somebody will give us an answer somewhere. Okay. Well, I think mostly it's because they don't have any answers. Nobody does. I mean, from what I understand, there's some uh, people uh, in uh, our government who would like to change the 30 to 40 hours, you know, to be a full-time employee. And I think with the new legislature, this might possibly happen. And uh, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think 40 hours should be uh, the regular work week rather than 30. Also, I don't think that we are going to be liable for this even though it starts January the 1st because our fiscal year ends the end of June. So this would not impact us. This year we would have to worry about next year's. Is that right, Mr. Marasini? Um, no, you, uh, our, our fiscal year starts, our next fiscal year will start July 1, which is in the middle of, of, the, of the government's um, calendar, you know, the calendar yeah. year. And that information that we received uh, on Monday, it did have both time frames, and they explained how it overlapped, okay? Uh, it, it is a very, very complex issue. And uh, what, what Dr. Brinkus uh, had indicated is that they're going to be working to collectively, um, instead of having 42 districts out there trying to, you know, talk to 42 different people, they're trying to get that one person there to, to explain it. And, and I can tell you, on Monday morning, we came out a little bit more confused than we went in. It, it really was. It was very confusing. Um, the questions that were asked, the uh, presenters really didn't have answers for some of those questions. So um, it just shows that, you know, uh, from our end, uh, it's not as clear, crystal clear as it needs to be at this time. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, gathering all the, well, I guess gathering the information is a good idea, but I just hope we, don't, we aren't spinning our wheels since we don't know a lot of this. I remember reading somewhere in terms of penalties that you don't have to pay a penalty on the first 30 employees who do not qualify. Not true. Okay, I'll have to go back. I worry that if we don't get an answer and we get stuck, and then okay. we're backtracking. So if we have to find an answer, then we need to do what we have to do to get yeah. one. I agree. 
Yeah, they have no excuses, right, if you make a mistake. Right, but well, nobody wants to hear that, right, yeah. if it's, okay. if well, you legitimately don't know. So I think my, we better do our due diligence. My folder on Obamacare is about this high, so I guess it's I'll have to big. start through reading. Start reading. <laughs> That's well, holiday reading. Are, you know, <laughs> we, we have a staff that's to provide us the information, and, and clearly we need to have scenarios so that we can make an informed decision about how we should move forward with it. That's true, but they keep changing it. Well, know. you know, and I understand that, Loretta, but it's the law of the land right now, and so we, you have to base your decisions on what's the law of the land. And I don't think we skirt around and say we don't know. We have to address the, hit issue, head, is, the issue head on, uh, just like we're going to have to do with this budget coming up. That's all. Thanks for the conversation. Thank you. Education Committee, Mrs. Michelle Gallagher, Chair. Recommend approval of the following overnight field trips and conferences as listed. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to accept the agreement with Western Psychiatric Institute and Clinics Licensed Acad Academic School as presented. On behalf of the committee, I would like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval of the ALICE program model for school safety. On behalf of the committee, I would like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to create and staff a secondary life skills program located at Plum High School for the 2015-16 school year as presented. On behalf of the committee, I would like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, yes. I have a reservation um, about creating anything until we know about our budget. So I would, I guess, approve it as a, a temporary, but uh, with the understanding that, you know, we have a pretty large shortfall. And it didn't seem like the numbers were showing us much of a savings or what they really, the savings really were going to, to be. The, I'd like to see a better plan. I think that if we create it now, and someone can help me with this, um, are we able to, when we, when we are looking at the budget, are we able to? You, you still will have to separately vote on any of the financial elements to it. Okay. okay. And obviously, if you don't, vote for those, then it doesn't actually go into effect. I think this is to um, have administration begin to look into doing this and telling you what those costs and what you would have to hire and who they would be. Okay. And what your savings would be by not um, sending the students to private uh, schools that provide these services for uh, secondary life skills. I guess from my standpoint, I'd like to see a better cost-benefit analysis. I know we had some information presented to us. Um, I don't have it on the top of my head, but clearly um, if we do approve it, I think it should be on contingency, as um, Mrs. Stepnick said, that we have a, a complete analysis of the program and exactly what impact it's going to have on the 15-16 budget. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a wonderful idea. And I know about life skills. Um, so. Uh, that's just how I feel, but I, there is some budgetary implications. That said, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Recommend approval to accept a voluntary informal disposition for student D. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second, no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to re relocate Regency Park students to Old Holiday Park for the 2015-16 school year. On behalf of the committee, I would like to make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. I just wanted to add that we did have some discussion um, regarding this item during the education meeting. Um, we talked about uh, getting an expert opinion. Either we were going to house the students at the Old Holiday Park or the Old Pivic. Um, and I guess it is under the recommendation that Holiday Park would be the best, the best solution for our needs. That's cor correct? That's correct. Okay. I think it was signed off by Mr. Haller and Dr. Glasspool and our uh, Dennis Russo, I believe. Okay. I think all the, all the parties are signed off on it, so yes. Yeah. 
the, the very next day we had them go in. Okay. And because the original game plan was that Pivik was the better one, but a year and a half later, the situation has changed, and I, not that it's you know well, it's gotten really much, bad, and it's a much b bigger school. Yeah. So uh, we just wanted to get a final, a professional opinion, okay. <laughs> and verification. Okay. Any other discussion? No other discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to set the elementary sending zones beginning with the 2015-16 school year as November 18, 2014. Option D as attached, posted, and discussed. I will make that motion. However, I do have discussion. Okay. Second. I, I need a second. Okay. Motion and a second. Uh, discussion, please. Well, when we had discussed this last week, I think that we had left it at the options would be option A, option C, which is the current one that we have, or option D. We did have extensive discussion, and that's how I left the meeting. Um, I did not know that option D was going to be the only one on the agenda this evening. Uh, I know we did a vote of it being there, and I mean, circumstances have changed slightly, and we have heard from, you know, and I know it's saying that, you know, if you take someone out, another neighborhood's going to come in and, and you know, speak. Um, I have been very, very vocal about the center school zoning area. Um, quite honestly, I haven't liked any of the options. I was trying to find the right one. I haven't had a clear, clear a clear one that jumps out at me and says, this is the one. Um, I will echo what Mrs. Kelly had said earlier and knowing that in the previous years coming up to this point, we have basically told our PTAs and our families and our students that we would not be taking you out of your neighborhood school. When I do look at these areas and I do look at the Frankstown Acres area and, you know, and as well as the Center Hill, although it's a little bit easier for me to look at the Palmer Road, Fran Francis Road as being closer to um, Center School. It is not without that the Center Hill area too is close too. Um, I was vocal on another option um, and I was told that it would require another bus. So I'm not in love with any of these areas. And you know, maybe I'm the one that keeps speaking out. I feel like I'm the one that keeps saying, you know, let's revisit this area. I truly, from the depths of me feel sorry for this area and sincerely feel like we are not doing them our service. I would like to make a motion to add option A back into um, this evening just because it is, and I go back through my notes because I was, I think, we, I, I think we skipped around and I was chairing part of that while uh, Mr. McGuff was not there and we sort of went into citizens' comments. But there were five people that put option A as one of their top three. And so maybe in all fairness, when we got to the, what the last three were left, these folks all assumed we, they were coming back to hear us vote on three, not just two. Well, we have I'll, to vote on this one well, first. No, we to, well, well hold, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so that you don't get caught up in a parliamentary procedure for something as important as this. If the board is willing, you could put the same as you nominate somebody for a position. You could put up all the options and people vote for which option they want and see if one of them garners five votes. Can we finish discussion on this motion and then have a motion to table and then have another motion to... to well, I'm, I'm just okay. saying you can always discuss, okay. Okay. But, but I'm just suggesting to you if some are voting no because they prefer a different option. You're going to keep going through a whole series <clears throat> that you may want to initially just put whichever options you wish to consider and each person say whether they're voting for A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Well, I'd just like to, I have a few comments if I could just finish since we have a second in discussion. Um, one of the guiding key principles to keep Regency Park up was it's an, a, a neighborhood school. And then we have the unintended consequences of displacing neighborhood school students into some place they don't want to go. If we undertake this, we are going to be such hypocrites saying we love neighborhood schools, we're going to do that, 
and yet we're going to take these 30 students, whoever it would be, and put them in a school that they don't want to go to. So we're a board of directors, we're not a board of hypocrites. I clearly believe that as we look forward and if class size is an issue, I don't think these students are going to make a big difference in that school. I don't. And so I'm for tabling this motion. We need a motion to do that and revisiting option A. I, I'll make the motion. Can we modify option to vote? Is that what we're supposed to do? Roll call vote. A, B, A, B. Roll call vote. A, well, or is, this, is the request to be table so that this matter gets discussed at another meeting? No. Or is no, the request good. to table to do what I was suggesting? To do what you do. Then, then I think you could Modify. simply have uh, the person who made the motion, the second, withdraw it and do the pick which option you wish to vote for. Okay. Would that be acceptable? Sure. sure. Yes. Um, so I could re withdraw the motion on item number seven. And I assume the second would agree to that? Yeah, I'll agree to that. Okay. okay. And again, we're not, <laughs> we're, that's not quite procedurally correct, but I think for something that's important, you need to do what's more comfortable for everybody. Mm -hmm. So now you okay. would. I, I apologize, I'm not there. But so option A is, is could you refresh my memory? There's. So that, that both areas will go to the state center, is that correct? Correct. Now, would somebody move? Now, now the, the question is to have somebody make a motion for either A, I don't know which options you wish to consider, and then when that's done and seconded, you will vote on whichever option you prefer. In other words, which options are up for consideration? I'll make a motion that we <laughs> adopt option A. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. I just want to make sure, option A does not displace any students from any other district, right, or other school. It just adds Frankston Acres to Center, is that correct? And Center Hill, they keep, they well, stay. Yeah, just said, it, yeah. It keep, well, right. D would have moved Center Hill. Correct. Yeah. So A doesn't move anybody, but keeps the, the, the students in, from Frankston Acres into Center School. It is going to make just a little bit of larger class size than option, a few of them, but option A sends Frank's down acres students to Center Elementary School. Okay, I'm saying I'm going with A. I'm not in love with the class sizes, but no. um, I'm hoping that we are able to level that off. Yeah, I think we should do that. In prior years, I did a lot of research on class sizes, and uh, you know, I, I know that we have some teachers in Plumboro that teach an elementary school some some large class sizes. I think they do a wonderful job. And I think it's, in this case, it is extremely important to un understand that parents know best. That's what it's about. And uh, we clearly have to understand that. Uh, if parents know best, I'm not, I don't want to be here and be considered a hypocrite saying, you know what, we're building a new Regency Park because we love neighborhood schools and then displacing these students. So that's why I made the motion. That's how I feel. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I don't think simply because we, we uh, go for one of the options that were hypocrites. I mean, the, the old sending zones were, were ridiculous. They were all over the all over the map. And we did have to redistrict uh, these districts. And I spent um, quite a bit of time analyzing all five options. And, um, you know, I didn't have any bias or anything with any of the options. And I chose C as the best option. That's the one we voted for last week or last month. And I intend to stick with that because I believe that's the best option. And I don't think it's a hypocrite. Just simply because I want to uh, choose that option. I think it's uh, the best, best option for um, the district as a whole. Certainly when you redistrict, some people are going to be displaced and others are, are going to be unhappy about it. Um, somebody's going to be unhappy with all these options. And I looked at the uh, class size and the uh, geographics and I uh, analyzed it the, the best I could and I, I think option C is the best option. And I'm going to stick with option C. I use the pronoun I. Mr. Del Dow, I would be an option. I would be a hypocrite. And, and clearly, as I look at this, you know, um, this is going to be a tr have a tremendous impact on, on the education system we have. You know, we are in the education business, and we have to take into account the parents, the students, and now knowing that some of the many of the teachers may be reassigned. I'm even more skeptical and more scared about redistricting. Uh, this is a big undertaking. And clearly, we have to, 
we have to manage it right. And I think that uh, keeping these folks at the, at the school that they can see from their house and walk through their house and hear the bells and hear the kids playing, I mean, uh, I think it's important that we do that. And I wasn't here at the last meeting, so I have to apologize for that. I wasn't at the last meeting. But clearly, I think it's in something that, that, uh, that I, as a board member, would be remiss with myself if I voted against that. So. Well, what I, when I said I think option C is the best option, but I don't think D or A would be terrible. They were my second and third choices. Okay. Um, a was actually my second choice and D was my third choice. But okay. um, overall, I think C was my first choice. That's, okay. that's what I'm going to go with. Kevin, that, that's exactly my sentiment. I agreed that C was the best on paper. A was my second choice and D was my third choice. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in with the, the, the A, my second choice. But I also want to make, a, make note that, you know, uh, policy 706 about concerning uh, sending zones for schools, they can be adjusted every so often as our, our uh, demographic shift. As your children now are in center and go to junior high, there might be more or less kids in Frankstown Acres or in Central Hill. So I want, I want everybody to know that this is something that the board is entitled to do, should do, almost required to do every so often. This was not just a, oh, because we're building Regency, we want to do this. This, has been, this is something that needed to be done for a long time. And it probably will need to be done again in another three, four, or five years, depending on the demographic changes. So it's carved in stone for a while, but not forever. I think that's part of the problem. Um, <clears throat> we haven't district, redistricted since I, I don't know. I've been on the board nine years, and we haven't even discussed redistricting since I've been on the board. And uh, I think that's part of the problem, because we let it get so bad that now it's, it's uh, a major disruption of our, our district, where if we do it every five years or so, then um, we tweak it. We tweak it, yeah. exactly. And I think that's what we should do in the future. But um, again, this is where we are now. I, I do have one more comment, Mrs. Gallagher, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we keep talking about padding the numbers at Regency. And, and, I, and I, I, I find that to be a, a touch inappropriate, because we don't have schools big enough to put the kids at Regency if we were to close Regency. The two new elementary schools that were built, that were before I was on the board, uh, but they were built not large enough. I know there's this uh, preconceived notion in Holiday Park that the two Holiday Park schools are going to be one. They're not, it's not built to be big enough to consolidate those two schools. This redistricting had to happen. I know the other conversation was, well, keep us where we are so that way our kids aren't going to two and three schools because we have to re renovate Regency. Well, there's no choice. We have to do it this way. Uh, or we have a, a school full of children and no home for them if we close Regency. So we're not spending $10 million to pad numbers at Regency to keep a neighborhood school open. We're doing it because we made a commitment to that neighborhood to keep that school open. We're having the children that are close to that school go to that school. And our two new elementary schools, everybody needs to remember, were not built to be large enough to close Regency Park. Thank you. I just want to add one more thing. Michelle was right there. It was designed because we didn't want to have, uh, as they would say, our students become numbers in very large uh, elementary schools. So what we had to do is we had to step by step build one school, then build another school until we could even everything out. And again, we're not building or revamping uh, Regency Park for 30 students or 20 students. It's yeah. for the community. It's for that yeah. whole area. And like I said, five years down the road, when your kids are in junior high, things may change. So uh, we'll just keep it at that for a while and, and see if, if anything changes over the next few years. I, and I, again, I don't, think, I don't think we'll have to redistrict according to our demographic studies uh, for, for at least two or three, four years, maybe longer. But you never know. You never know how things are going to change. So right now, I think we're good. OK, any other discussion? So we are voting on option A. That was a motion and a second. And you made the motion. I made the motion. Second. Mm -hmm. So can we have a roll call vote on this? Mr. Colella. Yes. Mr. Valdell? No. Mrs. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. 
Mr. McDuff? Yes. Mr. St. Ledger? Yes. Mrs. Stepnick? Yes. Mr. Cavallaro is absent. Mrs. White? Yes. Mr. Zucco? Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you. The Education Committee met on November 11, 2014. Mrs. Gallagher will make this report. Uh, yes. Some of the items that we discussed on the November 11th Education Meeting, uh, it was pretty much jam-packed that evening. Um, we did talk with uh, Kathy Grajek. Uh, she presented the board with the creation of the Secondary Life Skills Program. We did discuss a little bit of that, um, which would be implementing grades 7 through 12. Um, Officer Mark Koss presented the board with the new security system, ALICE, to be implemented in our schools with training to our staff and administration and eventually our students. Our technology update is ongoing with the current technology trends being offered to our students and we will be revisiting our technology demands over the next few months. Again, one of the items that we did discuss was Kelly Services, that it needs to be re revisited. There were legitimate concerns from some of the board members regarding um, our October fill rates. So I definitely think that that's something that we will be discussing again. Um, we have a lot of holiday concerts and events taking place at our schools over the next month and I encourage all of our community to visit our website and continue to support our students by attending a few. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Um, Thank you for bringing up Kelly Services because I asked for it to be on this agenda this evening and it's not there. The next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, December 9, 2014 at 6 p.m. in the high school boardroom. Finance Committee, Mr. Tom McGuff, Chair. Recommend approval of the Treasurer's Report and Bill Payments for October 2014 as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend approval to renew the resolution to participate in the AIU Joint Purchasing Board with Michael Brewer as a regular member and Eugene Marasini as the alternate member. On behalf of the committee, I'll make that second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Recommend adoption of a resolution as presented to the board authorizing the incurring of non-electoral debt as they finance a proportion of the cost of the school district's elementary school renovation construction project and studies equipment, software, capital improvements and or renovations to various school district facilities as presented. On behalf of the committee, I'll make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I do have a few comments about it. Um, we are borrowing $10 million. Of the $10 million, this district will only net $8.5 million. A million dollars will be used to capitalize the interest. Uh, that being said, and knowing that we have a $3.5 million to $4 million deficit in our general, general budget, it seems contrary to what I've learned that we wouldn't have a long-term strategic plan to look at how these expenses are going to impact our budgets in year 16 and forward. Uh, it seems that we have severe cash flow problems, we have no long-term strategy, and we're going to spend $10 million to net 8.5, probably not even enough to build the school. And if you haven't noticed, our bond rating was reduced this today from an A-plus to an A-minus. Although it may not have significant impact on this bond issue, the reasons were decreasing trend in reserves and negative financial outlook. And it goes back to last year, whenever we didn't have the foresight to raise taxes, and now we're paying the price. And some citizens' comments said, why build a $10 million school for a few kids? Well, there are, there's still the kids. We need to build the school. But the reality is, is it the right time? I don't know if it's the right time. Because I, I don't have a strategic plan in front of me looking at our finances. The first thing I did, the second thing I did as a board member in 2010, 
to develop a long-term strategic financial plan that we looked at and we followed. And now that plan is done after four years and we sit here with no plan in front of us. And yet we're gonna borrow money to build a new school. And what we have all turn up in this host of internal issues that we have to resolve before we do anything. That's a few comments I had. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, Svento. Mr. Dowdell. Yes. Mrs. Gallagher. Yes. Mr. McDuff. Yes. Mr. St. Ledger. Uh, yes. Mrs. Stepnick. Yes. Mr. Camarello is absent. Mrs. White. Yes. Mr. Zucco. Yes. Mr. Calava. No. Recommend that the school district participate in the Security and Exchange Commission's Voluntary Municipalities Continuing Disclosure Cooperation, Cooperation Initiative. The school district officials are authorized and directed to execute such documents and take such actions as are appropriate to affect such participation. I'll be after the committee, I'll make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. no. Motion carries. The Finance Committee met on November 18, 2014. Uh, Mr. McGuff, will you make a report this evening? Well, actually, the agenda items that we just discussed uh, were all discussed at that meeting. And I would simply like to add to that just uh, wishes from the committee and wishes from our board to the community for a, uh, a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you. The next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, December 9, 2014, following the Facilities Committee in the High School Boardroom. Policy Committee, Mrs. Michelle Stepman, mm. Chair. Dr. Glass, boy, I have I, a few comments. I apologize. About, that's okay. okay. A few comments about the, the Finance Committee and maybe for some discussion with the Board. Uh, I'm sure you've had time to look at some of the items. Uh, I've asked for, and I have not received as yet, a itemized list of any item increasing over $5,000 for next year's budget. In order to look at the 80-20 rule and to drill down on why these costs are so substantially more, I think the board needs that. So as soon as you folks have time to get that, uh, please get that to the board. But with that being said, one of the two big ticket items were uh, purchase of new school buses for over $400,000 and purchase of technology. And I had discussions and I asked Mr. Marasini to provide us with some analysis about leased to ownership of buses and I think the board needs to re revisit that in the finance committee as well as technology. Um, we need to be able to know that when we were flush with cash, when we had six million dollars from a bond issue that refinanced, um, we could do things like this. We could buy new buses. That didn't impact our, le our general fund budget. But now all the capital expenditures are back into that budget. So it's not business as usual for this community or business as usual for the board. So we have to have more creative ways of looking at every penny. And if that means even saving $2,000, then we should save $2,000. Uh, but the reality is that uh, we need a, a better look at it. And uh, some things I also looked at are hiring freezes within the district. Our big thing, our personnel, besides that, we need to look at hiring freezes, we need to look at our capital expenditures, we need to look at cash flow, and we have to be honest. Uh, in the general fund budget this year, there was a tax increase already placed in there. That was not approved by the board. So clearly, that has to be revisited also. Uh, a lot of work to do with the budget, and I hope people come to it. It's gonna be an extremely difficult year. Last year, I used the word implode, and if we don't come up with some creative ways, we will implode. We will have layoffs. Thank you. The next meeting is scheduled for the 9th, um, and there will be uh, uh, de department supervisors there to uh, you know, continue to provide information to the board as to the specifics uh, regarding their budget. Uh, for those citizens at home, the budget is up on the website um, for your review. Please do not waste my time looking at school budgets that save us $50. It's a waste of your time, Dr. Glasspool, and it's a waste of my time. It just isn't gonna work. I mean, those low-hanging fruit is gone. I mean, we really need to get to find creative ways in looking at how we're gonna balance this budget. 
Um, we had a long discussion last year about this, and now we're really going to have to buckle up. So clearly, don't bring the principals and talk about coloring and do this. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about items and ways to significantly impact this budget. I gave you three right now, hiring freeze, lease to own, school buses, and technology. Please have the finance people look at those items and get back to the finance committee next session. Thank you. Policy, policy committee, Ms. Michelle Stepnick, chair, recommend approval to accept the following policies as presented. On behalf of the committee, I make that recommendation. I'll second, second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just real briefly, um, uh, on policy 9-11, uh, media relations, there was just a little language cleanup um, from what we had discussed last week. There was just some duplications and things. So if it's a little different, it, it, it basically saying the exact same thing, we just had a little bit of a, um, a language cleanup. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. say aye. no. Motion carries. The policy committee met on November 18th, 2014. Uh, Mrs. Stepnick will make this report. Uh, I would believe mostly everything we've already discussed here tonight, what we talked about in policy um, re regarding the new sending zones. Uh, we also did a change of language uh, in our board membership policy to be sure if we had a vacancy on our board, uh, we would know exactly which, um, which steps to follow to fill that vacancy. Um, we went uh, cover the organizational chart and, and of course media relations, which we did spend a great deal of time on. Other than that, I wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Transportation Committee, Mr. Joe Tomarello, Chair. The Transportation Committee did not meet this month. Athletic Committee, Mr. John St. Ledger, Chair, recommend approval to accept James Klippa as volunteer boys basketball assistant coach for the 2014-15 school year. Second. We have a motion. Oh, we've got three seconds. A motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. The Athletic Committee did not meet this month. Food Service and Nutrition Committee, Mrs. Loretta White. The Food Service Nutrition Committee did not meet this month. Mrs. White will make this report. Yes, um, talking about Thanksgiving, I had an early Thanksgiving. Um, I attended the Thanksgiving luncheon at Pivik Elementary. Um, I had uh, the turkey, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, and all the trimmings, and it was wonderful. There was more food than I could possibly eat. I'm sorry that some of you others could not make it. Uh, so um, I just want to, you know, thank the Pivik uh, food service employees for providing luncheon for me. But um, I do have a few announcements. Um, I would like to remind parents who uh, children uh, qualify for the free and reduced lunch that they also qualify for the free and reduced breakfast. And talking with Mrs. Haldasowski over there at Pivik. She says that on very cold days, she has hot chocolate with marshmallows for the kids in the morning. So I keep telling her I'm coming, but you know, we'll see, it's kind of early. <laughs> but uh, she also said that they have a magic menu day where they give away gently used stuffed animals. The animals are donated by teachers and staff, and they call it the Stuffed Animal Rescue League, and it's a big hit with the kids. Also at Pivik, every Wednesday, they have soup for the teachers. And uh, the soup is set up in the teacher lunchroom, and uh, they can have hot soup in, in the wintertime. Uh, what I want to say, though, if there are any food service managers or employees out there uh, from the other schools, because I'm sure they have programs that are just as worthy, uh, email me. And at the next meeting, I will let you know about all the wonderful food that your kids are getting from the other schools. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Intergovernmental Committee, Mr. John St. Ledger, Chair. The Intergovernmental Committee did not meet this month. Forbes Road Career and Technology Center, Mr. John St. Ledger, Representative. There is no report this evening. Eastern Area Schools, Mrs. Laura White, Representative. Mrs. White will make this report. Yes, uh, we received our yearly audit and uh, everything was in order. And I gave a copy of it to Mr. Marasini for, uh, for his files. Uh, and Mrs. McDonough reported that uh, the open house at Sunrise went as planned. 
They had a lot of vendors there so that the parents could come and, you know, see what kind of facilities and see what kind of services some of these other vendors can re, uh, pre, uh, give for uh, special needs students. Uh, the fundraising for the playground equipment is continuing and we only need about $20,000. So um, our next scheduled meeting is at 5.30 on December 18th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Legislative Policy Council, Mr. Joe Tomorell, representative. There is no report this evening. Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number 3, Mr. Tom McGuff, board member. There is no report this evening. President's report, Mr. Sal Colella. Mr. Colella will make this report. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dr. Glasspool. Uh, November was a very busy month with parent-teachers conference, veteran days, and second grading term beginning. Uh, the conclusion of fall sports. I'd like to say congratulations to the football team. I think they did a wonderful job. Uh, our coach, Matt Morgan, is being named the Pittsburgh Sports Regional WPAL 2014 Coach of the Year. The cast and crew of the senior, play cla senior class play noises off. Uh, congratulations to those folks. And congratulations to our fourth and fifth grade team of Ellie, Addison, Annabelle, and Leela for their first place victory at the annual History Bowl. Great news for Plum. Just a few dates to remember, December 27th is through December the 1st, November 27th through December the 1st is Thanksgiving break. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. December the 6th is Plum High School Madrigal Dinner. December 9th is the O'Block School Choral Concert. December 15th, we have early dismissal because of payday. December 16th is O-Strings Blick. O Block Strings Concert. 17th is Sugar Plum Days Concert. And 19th is O Block Holiday Dance and no school for the winter recess in December. Uh, again, thank, thank you for all for coming. I hope, it was, uh, I hope it was enjoyable for you. Please come back. We need more people to come and, and tell us what they think. Um, you know, we, have, we like to listen. That's why God gave us two ears and one mouth, and I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, that being said, that's it for me, Dr. Glasspool. Thank you. Uh, announcements. We have the reorganization meeting uh, on Monday, December 1st at 6 p.m. in the high school boardroom. Uh, the next meeting would be December 9th. Uh, there will be a committee of the whole of sorts where we're going to have facilities, education, finance, policy, and other meetings that we need to have on that one day. And then the voting meeting this month will be on the 16th. Our last meeting this month will be on the 16th of December. And due to all the concerts and, and goings on here at the school district, we will be in the Pivot Cafeteria. So please join us on the 16th at 7 p.m. in Pivot Cafeteria. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. Any discussion? Let's adjourn. No discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Happy aye. Thanksgiving. We are adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care.